Okay. Okay. Understand. Uh, I want to express uh, my gratitude to the previous speaker for the perfect presentation. Uh, it's mostly from a uh, geographical uh, point of view. All my speech will be quite similar, but it will be more about the uh, political conceptions. Uh, we always like uh, to talk inside the Caucasus and specifically in Georgia uh, that uh, our bad fate and our misfortune quite often is linked to the someone else, uh, to someone who didn't help us from the west, from the east, from the north. But we very often fail to mention that there are our faults. So we, there are some things uh, in the Caucasus which we failed to do and which we didn't do. Uh, and my today's uh, speech will be dedicated to this topic. The title of my speech, let's say, will be, will be uh, The Caucasus Failed Project of Interdependence 1918-1924. Uh, the Caucasus holds quite significant strategic uh, position in the age of uh, civilizations, in the age of, of uh, Muslim and uh, Christian uh, cultures, and in the age of empires uh, throughout the history. And it always caused uh, rivalry between uh, various uh, empires of, uh, of the Worlds, or uh, empires of the world. Uh, as the uh, British Foreign Secretary, uh, Lord Curzon, uh, he was pre Foreign Secretary of Great Britain in 1919-1924, and he was a distinct supporter of uh, uh, Georgian independence. He traveled uh, to the Caucasus uh, from north, and he crossed the Rally Pass, and came down uh, to Stepansminda, and then he noted in his diary, this is celebrated. Uh, this is the celebrated pass that drew a line to the conquest alike of Alexander and Justinian, the Caucasian gates of the ancient world, uh, which shut off the east on the side of the west, and were never owned at entrance and exit uh, by the same power till they fell into Russian hands. Uh, this road is for the present, at any rate, and will probably long remain of the highest military importance, as it is the first line of communication both with Armenia and Caspian. Later on, Curzon traveled uh, from uh, Batumi to Baku, and he noted, uh, uh, nothing can exceed the beauty of the line of railroads from Batum to Tiflis. Curzon recalled Argonauts and thereby added that, with the wealth to which that of the Golden Fleece was nothing, the region was still attracting new Argos, uh, but uh, this was this is uh, what what was interesting, what was attraction for the uh, greater powers. But the Caucasian peoples, of course, themselves uh, uh, had their own interest, which was uh, uh, to, uh, which was their desire to enjoy independence. But uh, unfortunately for them. In 19th century, when it was age of the uh, great empires, it was uh, impossible. But uh, after the 117 years of the Russian yoke, uh, after the collapse of uh, Tsarist Russia, uh, it, it seemed uh, it became possible uh, for uh, Caucasian people to try uh, their independence, independent uh, existence. But uh, in the turmoil of uh, different revolutions uh, uh, and Bolshevik group and uh, World War I, independence of the Caucasian uh, states uh, uh, seemed very feeble because everyone realized that uh, uh, the Russia sooner or later would be revived, restored, and uh, uh, it would come down uh, back to the Caucasus. But before, before Russians came in, uh, it was uh, Turks, Ottomans, uh, who came to the Caucasus and tried to uh, seize the lands uh, which, were, uh, which were granted to them uh, by Bolsheviks according to Press Little's Treaty of uh, 3rd of March uh, 1913. 
and uh, 1918. Uh, so uh, in the end, the Caucasus, Caucasian people had uh, three Caucasian republics had uh, three options. The republics of Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan had three options to be back to the Russian Empire, but before going back to the Russian Empire to uh, give uh, some territories and a big part of their territories actually to uh, Ottomans and this was evidently unacceptable uh, for Caucasian people to unify economic and military capacities uh, and to be joined in the Federation of uh, Caucasus and the third, third option was uh, uh, to look for the West protector in the West but actually as the fact, attraction of the Western power in the Caucasus also demanded from the Caucasian states unity because uh, uh, neither Georgia nor Armenia or Azerbaijan uh, as such uh, separately uh, could be interesting for anyone in the West. It was, uh, uh, it was uh, the single project for any power coming uh, in the region. So, anyone coming from the West expected here a uh, peace and uh, amicable situation. Otherwise, in the, nobody would take a risk uh, uh, to take a responsibility over the uh, turbulent region. So, out of three, one option was unacceptable uh, for Caucasian uh, people, uh, peoples, and uh, the rest of the two options uh, asked from them unity or uh, integrity in the key principles. Uh, because as uh, even Caucasus uh, is not uh, the pro uh, project uh, standing alone, but it is part of the project of uh, the mirrors, the trading routes uh, towards Persia, towards Central Asia, uh, Middle East, uh, and so on and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, but the trade always uh, asks for the peace and. Uh, understanding. Uh, but uh, actually this is a case when the Caucasian states failed to uh, realize uh, what was the demand of the history from them. Actually there is not uh, one country or another who is guilty in this misunderstanding and uh, the other one uh, who is uh, absolutely clean, let's say. Uh, everyone took a share of its own sin and uh, now I'll go down to the facts uh, and actually I'll be hard at uh, my own country, uh, Georgia, because yeah, evidently I know much more Georgian primary sources than the ones from uh, Armenia or from Azerbaijan. So when uh, the World War uh, I uh, broke out in uh, 1914, there was formed uh, uh, the Committee of, for Independent Georgia, it was uh, in Germany. And what this committee was doing uh, uh, with the support of the uh, German uh, Foreign Office trying to uh, achieve Georgian independence and territorial integrity uh, from Russian Empire and liberation of uh, Georgian lands uh, then in uh, Ottoman Empire. But the problem was that uh, Germany at the time was the ally of uh, Ottoman Empire. Uh, so uh, Germans could not, uh, could not go in confrontation against Ottomans. But what was proposed by uh, the Georgian Committee for Independence uh, uh, the satisfaction of uh, satisfaction of Ottomans on the expense of Armenians. So we should, uh, in order to get the Georgian lands back uh, from Ottomans, we should give them Armenian lands. Uh, and yeah, this was absolutely immature policy. It's my own belief. Um, but uh, the, then later on, in uh, the, in autumn 1918. Uh, Turkish assault, uh, Turkish assault uh, began uh, to the Caucasus and then it was uh, Armenians and Georgians together fighting Ottomans whilst the third, uh, third country of the uh, federation, Azerbaijan, uh, not only didn't support uh, other parts of confederation, Armenia and, Azerba Ar Armenia and Georgia, 
but Azerbaijan actually was acting uh, against uh, against uh, Georgia and Armenia in favor uh, of Turks as they as they failed pretty much sentiments of the Turkish Brotherhood. Uh, but then came a proposal from uh, Germans and uh, the one from Turks as well uh, that uh, their main interest, uh, Turkish main interest was uh, Armenia and lands surrounding Yerevan. Uh, so Akakic Henkteli, who was uh, uh, head of uh, head of uh, head of uh, Transcaucasian uh, Federation, uh, started uh, sending uh, letters, I mean telegrams, uh, from the conference uh, in May 1918, demanding from Georgian gov Georgian government and personally from North Jordania declaration of uh, independence. Actually, as a Georgian patriot, of course, uh, Chenkeli was absolutely right because uh, he wanted to save his own country. And he, his action is pretty much uh, appreciated because he, he brought the uh, declaration of uh, Georgian independence. But on the other hand, to look, uh, to look at this issue from a uh, Caucasian perspective, uh, Chenkeli at that time was not in a position of to talk uh, only on behalf of Georgia. He was leader of the whole Transcaucasia. So, from whole tra whole Transcaucasian point of view, uh, Chengel's action, I would say, was of um, uh, betraying, uh, let's say, Armenian uh, Armenian fate. Uh, and then uh, Georgians uh, Georgians thought that uh, you know. Uh, we are on the safer side, and the Georgian delegation went to Germany. And, uh, for example, Nikon Nikoladze was talking to a German foreign minister. Uh, that now we should. I mean, Armenia was a long time ago forgotten, and now we should talk about the trade route uh, Berlin, Batum, Beijing. But uh, uh, the history, history uh, erected new challenges uh, before the, in front of the. Uh, Caucasian states, and uh, in November, uh, Georgian ally Germany was uh, defeated in the World War One. So it was uh, Armenian uh, Armenian allies, uh, uh, states of uh, intent, uh, who got the victory in this war. So the situation was absolutely upset and uh, totally changed. Uh, but uh, Armenians at that moment were uh, full of uh, desire of uh, revenge. Uh, at that time, Armenians got very strong support from the West. Uh, there were uh, and the group of supporters of Armenians from USA, for example. There were uh, 30 US governors, uh, congressmen, uh, even President Wilson was uh, uh, among them. And uh, as uh, Georges Clemenceau, uh, Prime Minister of France, wrote to the head of the Armenian delegation, uh, Bogos Nubar Pasha, Clemenceau, uh, I'll, quit, uh, I'll quit the words of Clemenceau, I'm happy to confirm to you that the government of the Republic of France, like that of uh, Great Britain, has not ceased to place the Armenian nation among those peoples uh, whose fate the Allies intend to settle according to the supreme laws of humanity and justice. Uh, and then Lloyd George wrote down in his memoirs, uh, Lloyd George, Prime Minister of Great Britain, uh, from the moment uh, war was declared, uh, there was not a British statesman of any party who did not have it in mind that if we succeeded in defeating this inhuman Ottoman Empire, one essential condition of the peace that we should impose was the redemp redemption of Armenian valleys forever from the bloody misrule with uh, which uh, they had been stained by the infamies uh, of the Turk. And it was, there was also Denikin, uh, the white Russians, uh, uh, who were very hostile to Georgia and Azerbaijan. And uh, Denikin's uh, diplomats, uh, then residing in Paris, uh, were promising Armenians granting of independence. 
though they never, uh, I mean, they were asked by Armenian diplomats uh, to make such statements publicly, but uh, they never made such statements. So it is uh, very doubtful whether Denikin and White, uh, whether White Russians and Denikin was going to uh, grant them uh, grant them independence. So pretty much encouraged uh, from very strong support from abroad, uh, Armenians uh, Armenians thought that uh, they were their prospects uh, in the world policy was uh, much uh, brighter, uh, broader uh, than um, uh, the only Caucasian, let's say, federation or uh, Caucasian integration. So they targeted the Mediterranean and sometimes uh, the dreams went down to the Caspian Sea. Uh, and that is how uh, Armenia broke in the inside Georgia and uh, the war started at the end of 1918. Uh, at the time when uh, all the all three republics of the Caucasus uh, were in a very difficult situation and it was very unlikely that this war started between the between the two republics, and then uh, in uh, February, uh, 12th of February in 1919, Armenian delegation went to Paris uh, to address uh, the leaders of the victorious powers, and I would say half of uh, half of their speech was uh, uh, dedicated to the criticism towards Georgia and Azerbaijan. So instead of asking uh, concessions or uh, um, recognition of independence, half of their speech uh, targeted criticism of uh, Georgians uh, and Azeris so they made them uh, labeled as uh, the traitors of the common, uh, common Caucasian uh, cause and then there was uh, so-called uh, southwest uh, uh, Caucasian government. Uh, this is uh, around the uh, down from the Batum region uh, in the north uh, eastern part of nowadays Turkey, and it took uh, this uh, so-called uh, southwest Caucasian government. It, it was a Turkish-supported state. Um, it took. Uh, Georgian and Armenian territories, and Azerbaijan, Azerbaijani government uh, had, has funded this project, apart from uh, uh, Turks, it was funded by uh, Azerbaijani government, and they recognized uh, this government, who acted against, another, uh, against the other Caucasian uh, states. Uh, then uh, we had uh, Georgian and uh, when Georgian delegation uh, went to the Paris Peace Conference uh, at the beginning of uh, 1919, uh, in the instructions uh, written by the government for the Georgian delegations, uh, the main idea of the instructions was that uh, we should ask, uh, uh, we should work at the conference in accord with uh, Armenians, and we should distance, uh, distance ourselves from Azerbaijanis as they are uh, pretty much linked to, with Turks who were losers of the war. Uh, but in reality, uh, Armenian delegation did its best to distance uh, itself uh, from uh, uh, Georgian and uh, Georgian and Azerikos because they, them they felt themselves that they were more privileged than the uh, other Caucasian uh, republics. And uh, when uh, Denikin's menace, Denikin's threat towards uh, Georgia and Azerbaijan became very evident because in summer 1919 uh, Denikin occupied Dagestan, uh, North Caucasia. Um, as, uh, Armenia, uh, Georgia and Azerbaijan signed, um, signed the military treaty between each other. Uh, and they pledged themselves to support with all their military forces uh, in case of the foreign uh, invasion. And they, of course, invited uh, Repo the Republic of Armenia to join uh, this um, uh, to join this uh, treaty, but they were refused. 
uh, actually Armenians uh, starting from the uh, end of the World War refused to sign any treaty uh, with Georgia and uh, Azerbaijan because they themselves felt privileged and it was the same uh, when uh, Georgia first it was uh, during the German presence in the region it was Georgia uh, who abandoned uh, Armenian coast and then later it was Armenia who abandoned Georgian coast uh, and only, the only document uh, signed uh, commonly by Georgians, Armenians and Azeris it was uh, in uh, Paris on 28th of uh, August 1919. Uh, it's a time when British troops were leaving the uh, Caucasian region and uh, everyone realized that uh, uh, when, Brits, uh, when Brits leave, uh, Russians would come and uh, Georgians and Azeris felt themselves quite in panic. So they, was, uh, they uh, prepared a memorandum to present to the great powers uh, in which they underlined threat of Denikin and threat of uh, Russians uh, that because of this threat, uh, Brits, Brits were supposed to keep the troops uh, inside the Caucasus, but uh, Armenians told them, no, we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, write such kind of motivation in this memorandum because we are not afraid of Denikin, Denikin is... Uh, our fellow guy, but we are afraid of you. Uh, so uh, we main threat for Armenia is not Denikin, but main threat for Armenia is Azerbaijan and Georgia. So uh, they were talking a lot about this motivation. So what we should uh, write in this memorandum? Finally, they could not uh, reach any uh, any uh, consensus. Let's say. And they wrote memorandum that we want to keep British troops, but there was no motivation at all why you want to keep these British troops. And they uh, finally submitted, they were so late, so much discussing about this memorandum that they submitted uh, uh, this memorandum only August 28th when the troops were already out. So this is uh, sometimes uh, this is how childish the uh, international politics ca can be. Uh, and then there was a um, uh, question of uh, railway. So each uh, Caucasian state had uh, their own advantage. Let's say. For others it was the Baku oil, uh, and they could, uh, they could always uh, seize um, uh, trans uh, transfer of oil to the other republics. But it was uh, uh, Georgia who controlled uh, tra transit of Azerbaijani oil to the west. So if uh, Azerbaijan uh, didn't give Georgia oil, uh, then Georgia could uh, seize this transfer, uh, this pipeline, uh, Bako Batumi. And then it was Armenia who had uh, very strong international support, and this Armenia was the one uh, who was using. Uh, uh, against Georgia and Azerbaijan, its international influence, but it was uh, through Georgia that Armenia was given uh, the international aid. So Georgia was using its uh, its strategic ge geographical position to block tra to block transfer of goods uh, towards uh, Armenia. So they, uh, all three countries uh, did their best uh, to fight each other and to destroy. Uh, to destroy uh, each other's image, uh, because uh, in some extent each of them felt that they were privileged in this or that way, but they failed to realize that uh, uh, their uh, their future was in unity. Otherwise, uh, they were not able to survive, and uh, they actually in um, uh, in uh, autumn 1919 also. Uh, Armenians, uh, including Armenians, Caucasian states realize that uh, uh, there are not Western powers coming inside the region and giving uh, giving uh, giving uh, independence, recognizing independence and granting security and membership of League of Nations, so on and so forth. So they realized more or less that uh, they depended pretty much on each other. So in November 1919, uh, there were signed treaties between uh, Georgia and Armenia, uh, Georgia and between Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia. According to these treaties, uh, they abolished customs, they abolished, uh, uh, they made the free transit uh, uh, from state to state, and they they agreed to uh, uh, to. Uh, 
discuss, uh, to decide the frontier issue without a war, uh, with the help of international, uh, international arbitration. Uh, and it was the demand of the international actors. So uh, the main supporters of the republics was uh, Lord Curzon, uh, Oliver Wardrop, uh, uh, Aristide Briand. All of them were calling on uh, the Caucasian republics that uh, we want to help you, we want to give you armament, for example. Uh, uh, and there were people who were thinking of giving armament to the Caucasian republics, but the argument, counter-argument from the other side always comes that they will use this armament against each other, but not against Russia. So, uh, international position of the Caucasus was very much weakened because of this uh, internal quarrels. And uh, then uh, in uh, April, uh, in uh, April uh, 1920, Azerbaijan was occupied by the uh, Soviet Russia and Caucasus failed as international project because uh, uh, then the even main uh, actors like uh, Lord Curzon got disinterested into the Caucasian affairs because uh, uh, Azerbaijan and Georgia was the common project because of the Baku Batumi uh, railway and the pipeline. And uh, uh, this uh, railway and pipeline so both were cut into half, uh, and then no, it, it was not uh, like half package was not interesting for uh, for Great Britain, for example. Uh, and then in uh, autumn 1920, uh, Ottomans break in Armenia, and the Armenia was promised a lot of help and prosperity, and from sea to sea. Uh, uh, lands and uh, immense prosperity uh, was uh, abandoned alone uh, to its own fate. Then it, then it was only Georgia uh, whom Armenians uh, could base their hope on. But uh, when uh, there was a war between Armenia and Turks, between uh, Ataturk forces and Armenians, uh, in Tbilisi arrived in the way of Ataturk uh, Gyazim Bey. And Kazim Bey promised Georgian side that you know we are not interested in Georgia. Don't don't be involved in this conflict. You know, we will take territories only for Armenia, and we want to have amicable uh, relationship with Georgia. Unfortunately, Georgian side uh, believed it, uh, believed it, and then it was three months after when uh, uh, the Ottomans then came back after conquest of Armenia. They came back to Georgia and uh, occupied. Uh, uh, south uh, eastern part of the uh, republic, and moreover, uh, the misunderstanding was so uh, so uh, gone so much far between the republics that in 1921, when uh, Soviets broke in Georgia and there was a uh, Georgian-Russian war in February March 1921, at the same time in Armenia there was going on. Uh, revolt, very strong uprising against Soviet, and it's uh, for me still remains ununderstandable that how it's possible that uh, these two peoples, Georgians and Armenians, uh, were not coordinating actions uh, actions of each other. So, uh, a revolt of Armenia was going separately, and Georgian Russian war was going separately. So they were not uh, mature and smart enough uh, to uh, negotiate uh, the common battle and to coordinate their battle uh, against the same forces, the same enemy. And uh, even more than that, in uh, 1924, when Georgians were planning uh, revolts against Soviet Russia, uh, it had uh, uh, revolts, uh, this revolt had uh, two, uh, two cornerstones, let's say. Uh, two mainstreams. It was first was uh, military, uh, victory military capacity uh, the country had to use, and the second was secondly international uh, support. Uh, from uh, first perspective, uh, how it's possible and how the Georgian political elite imagined that time that Georgia alone uh, could uh, win. Uh, failed to organize this uh, uh, revolt, this insurgen insurgency uh, together. And then there was international uh, point of view. 
So when you uh, when you are organizing the real world, you might uh, achieve some uh, uh, military uh, military victory at some stage, but then you need international support in uh, uh, to recognize uh, as a unit international community, which will recognize uh, your uh, military achievements. And then you need uh, armament, which you should bring uh, from abroad. And uh, also, Georgian political elite at that time failed to realize, and it was from both parties, uh, from opposition and opposition, because this was common insurgency movement, they failed uh, to realize that uh, uh, for the West, for the greater powers, uh, uh, the Georgian insurgency would not be interesting. They would not back this insurgency uh, if, unless it was common Caucasian. But uh, this insurgency was uh, organized only in Georgia and carried out uh, only inside the Georgia. So those are the misfortunes and uh, mis all the misplanning or misunderstanding which took place in 1918-1924. Uh, and uh, mainly because of, uh, because of uh, this immature policy of all three Caucasian states, um, uh, the end was, uh, end was failure. Thank you very much.